mic portion of the show today. Remember, it is five minutes, it's a true open mic, you can say whatever you want, or you can also follow the theme and tell us a train wreck story. So, I'd like to welcome, first of all, Nathan. How's it going? So this is my first open mic ever, so it's a good experience. Okay. So my name is Nathan, I'm from San Antonio, I just moved here about a, a few weeks ago, and my title, which I had come up with, is From Cult to Christ. So back when I was 19, eight years ago, I was going through this like spiritual, religious journey where I was like, you know what, I want to learn more about the Bible. I've, I started going to church, well I moved in with a friend, when I, a family friend when I was 16, so I moved out of my dad's. Um, moved in with a family friend. They went to the Methodist church, so I went there out of respect for them. I had no intention of learning about the Bible or obeying the Bible. So um, when I was 19, though, I was kind of like got to that stage in my life where I was like, okay, I'm going to try to investigate for myself. And so I just became a freshman at the University of Texas at San Antonio and uh, started trying out different like campus ministries. And um, about a year into it, when I was like 20, some guy approached me and uh, he said, hey, you want to study the Bible? You want to come out to our Bible ministry group? And I'm like, okay, sure. I was already kind of wanting to learn about it. So he was part of a group called the International Church of Christ. They believe that if you're not a part of that movement, then you're not entering the kingdom of God. You're not going to heaven. So regardless of what church you go to, what denomination you're part of, they're very, very exclusive. But they use the Bible and they kind of use scripture to kind of to, to say how that's like, hey, well, that's like, they're, that they're in the right, that that's an okay belief to have. And I went along with it. I mean, I was young, I was in college, I was 20, so I didn't know any better. And I was like, they use scripture, so I'm like, well, that makes sense because it says it right there. Um, so, but anyway, so during that time, um, my personality, I'm a very black or white thinker, so like, and I'm very literal. And so that mixed in with like, them being very literal about the Bible, talking about, oh, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect, or there's a scripture that says, if you don't know the good you ought to do and don't do it, that's a sin. So I'm like thinking like, oh, well, picking up trash is good. So then it's like, I'll get really weird about not, if I don't pick up every single piece of trash, then I'm like, oh, well, I'm in sin and I'm displeasing God. Or I'd be like, if I don't, if I don't talk to this person about bringing them out to church or studying the Bible with them, then I don't love them or I don't care about them. I'm displeasing God. So I got really like weird. And so during that time, I developed a lot of perfectionism, a lot of obsessive compulsive disorder, anxiety, depression. So I had to see like counselors multiple times throughout that time where uh, they di I was diagnosed with bipolar 2, obsessive compulsive disorder, and major depressive disorder. And I think a lot of that stemmed not only from my background, because I did have somewhat of a troubled background, but because of just how much pressure and just how much turmoil that I was kind of developing from that from the church. So anyways, um, fast forward about a year ago, 13 months ago, I started to feel very micromanaged and confined and restrained. And I felt like I wasn't able to be myself. And so I started to express all my concerns. Hey, I don't agree with this, I don't agree with that. And I'm like, well, I'm gonna be trying out different churches. And of course everyone thought I was crazy because like, they're like, oh my God, if you leave the church then you're leaving God. But I was like, well, I have to go try out different churches because I don't agree with what you're doing. And I started to express my concerns with everybody. And it got to the point where they kicked me out of the church because I wouldn't stop telling people how I felt and the things that I didn't agree, agree with. So after that, I wanted nothing to do with the Bible. I'm like, screw this, screw God, screw the Bible, screw religion. Like, I don't care. I'm agnostic now. Um, and then after that, I kind of just like fell into like this deep apathy where I just stopped caring about everything. It's like the me that I got so much meaning from my relationship with the God that I'm like, well, what do I have to live for? What's the point? So I kind of just locked myself in my room for like nine months. Stop exercising, stop eating healthy, stop um, doing anything productive. I had no intention of being productive. Like, my goal is to be homeless. Like, I'm like, screw it. Like, I don't care about anything. Like, fuck life. So, anyways, March 10th, like, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give this faith thing a try. So, again, so now that I'm like, kind of like in a much more like different mindset where I'm like, kind of, I'm very skeptical, skeptical about the Bible. Even though I agree with Jesus' teachings, I'm always like asking questions. So, I just moved here a couple weeks ago and I definitely do agree with Jesus' teachings because I feel like they're very profound, um, but I'm still questioning a lot and so doing a lot of my own investigation and research. And, um, and I'm also like studying like church, like Scientology right now. I've been going to like the Tibetan Buddhist temple. So it's like, if I want to claim to be Christian and I'm gonna like tell people to do the same, 
then like I want to like thoroughly investigate other religions too. That's just like saying like, oh, well, I'm going to be an engineer for the rest of my life. And it's like, well, have you tried any other religion or other jobs yet or occupations? No. Right. Well, you're an idiot. Like, so it's, I think it's important to like, if you're going to claim to be a Christian, then at least explore other religions and stuff. Um, yeah. Well, man. So with all that said, um, what am I, my goal is to be more like Jesus. Cause, um, and so like what I've been doing is I, I moved here a couple weeks ago. So I've been uh, like, I spend a lot of time with the homeless population cause I feel like they need help. And that's what the, like did you just uh, cared about. He, and then also, so like, I pretty much like, I haven't found a job yet. Even though I got a job at Subway, I'm like, well, I kind of want to just learn to depend on like God for my daily needs. So it's like, where's my next meal going to come from? Where, how am I going to get gas money? I have currently have a dollar in my pocket right now. And I'm like, well, I'm like, hey, I got some free cookies and stuff. Like, I didn't eat today, but that was my first meal, so that's great. And um, like yeah, last night, I've been sleeping in my car. Last night, I slept under the bridge. Even though I can stay at my friend Deacon's place that lives here, it's like, if I'm going to be like, if I'm going to claim to be Christian and be like Jesus, then I'm going to do what Jesus did. And Jesus didn't have a place to live. He didn't put on God for everything he did. So I'm going to do that. Um, so it's been, I'm going through this spiritual quest right now, and I feel like it's been extremely enlightening. So, but yeah. I just want to say, Jesus is also a carpenter and a fisherman. Oh, yeah, good to point out. <laughs> <laughs> he had. He, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>